Hello and welcome everyone. In this podcast, what I'd like to do is talk with you a little bit about Microsoft Teams. This is the tool we're going to use this semester to present class materials in a synchronous manner. So for every class, you will log into Microsoft Teams and join the class for the material that will be covered that day. I know some of you might be new to Microsoft Teams and some of you might have used it before, but I thought it would be a good idea to just introduce you to some of the basics. Now, I have already registered you for the Microsoft Teams pages that you're going to need in this class. You will see that you have two different teams for this class. You may have teams for other classes, but for genetics, you will have a Teams page for your lab and a Teams page for our lecture. I'm going to focus on Microsoft Teams for lecture, but most of what I say will apply also to the lab. When I registered you, you should have received an email like this. Yours may look a little different, but it'll look something like this. Now once you click on this, it will send you through a few different steps in order to get logged into your Microsoft Teams. Now if you can't find your now if you can't find the email that was sent to you, you can just go to your CMISH account and go to your Office 365. If you don't know how to get to Office 365, contact the help desk and they'll be able to point you in that direction. But you should know that as a CMU student, you have access to all of these Microsoft programs. And as you can see, one of them here is Teams. So all you have to do is click on that. And then when you do that, it should take you to a page that looks something like this. Now you have two options. You can use the desktop version. For mine, it's, it's a Mac, so it says get the Mac app, but there's also a, a PC app as well. Or you can use the web app. It is highly recommended that you use the Mac app or the PC app. That is, use the desktop app. And the reason is that there are more features that are available to you when you use the desktop app and it functions a lot better. So make sure you get the desktop app. Once you've opened up Teams using the desktop app, you will see all of the different Microsoft Teams pages that you have available to you. You'll definitely see this one here, Biology 211 Lecture Fall 2020, and you will see one of these labs. There are four of them here, but you will only see one of them for the lab component. You may have other Teams pages as well for other classes or for other groups that you're involved with on campus. So let's go ahead and click on the Biology 211 Lecture Fall 2020 Teams page. Now yours might look a little different than mine, but you should definitely see this top part here and you'll see the general channel here and you'll see the main lecture channel here. All students can see both of these. Now depending upon which group you're in, you will only see one of these groups. When you come to class, what I want you to do is to click on main lecture channel. You have an option here to open up a meeting. However, I don't want you to do that. I'll be the one that opens the meeting for the main lecture channel. A problem sometimes occurs when multiple people open up a new meeting and then students don't know which one to go to. So just wait for the one to open that, that I'll open. So when you open up this channel, as I said, look for the meeting that I already have started and click join. And when you do, it'll open up to the PowerPoint presentation that I may have already uploaded for you to see. It also might just show myself and everybody else that's in the class, just kind of depending on when you log in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the PowerPoint presentation for now. And I'm gonna show you some of the features that we may use. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is that you can show or hide participants. Currently I'm showing the participants and right now it's only me in the meeting because we haven't started class yet. But on any day, given day in class you should see 66 other people listed here. I'm going to go ahead and hide that now. And the next thing I'm going to show you is the conversations. So we can have conversations in here and this is one thing I would encourage you to do if you have a question for me, you're welcome to type it here. Or if you have a general question you could type it here and maybe someone could answer it. So you might say what is DNA? or something like that. And all of those conversations will appear here. You can also raise your hand. And when you raise your hand, it'll show a little hand by the person who has raised their hand. Now, I don't know if everyone sees that, but I'll see that. And so if I see your hand up, I can call on you. So feel free to use that. If your hand's been up for a little bit and I haven't called on you, that might be because I, I unfortunately, am not just not seeing it. So feel free to speak up or send a chat or something like that if your question isn't being answered and then you can easily lower your hand as well. If you click on these three little dots here, you can change how you're viewing this. Gallery, which will show a few pictures, a large gallery, which will show more pictures, and then this together mode 
it will show people as if they're sitting in a classroom. And you can apply different background effects. And this is useful because you may be in your apartment or in your dorm and you don't want everyone to see your dorm or your apartment or wherever you happen to be. So feel free to use any of these settings here. I'll just pick this mountain scene here. Then you have to hit apply. And now you don't see my office and so I could have a really messy office and, and you would never know it unless you came to visit me. And then you would realize, yes, I usually have a pretty messy office. So we'll go ahead and keep that on there. It looks nice. All right, you can also record. I'm going to ask that you don't record. If anything gets recorded, I'll start the recording. And I usually don't record the class. And, and the main reason for that is I want everyone to feel comfortable talking and asking questions. And that makes it a little bit easier if we're not recording the class. And you can play around with some of these other settings as well. Two other things I want to show you here. One is turning on and off the camera. So I just turned the camera off and I'm going to turn it back on. When I taught this genetics class in the summer, one of the comments I got back at the end of the semester was that students felt less engaged if they didn't have their camera on or if other students didn't have their camera on. And there's a lot of studies out there that, that support this idea that if you have your camera on, you will feel more connected to the class and to the students and you will be more engaged in the material and you should do better in the class. So I really encourage you to keep the, the video on throughout class and when you're meeting in your individual groups. Now, when we're meeting in the main group like we are right now in this example here, go ahead and turn off your microphone. That way any background noise doesn't come into our discussions. It, you may have a dog or a cat or maybe a baby brother or a mom or dad that likes to talk a lot and so you might want to keep them keep that that background noise shut off and then anytime you have a question you can quickly turn that back on this other this last one I'm going to show you is called the share content and what you can see down here is when you click on that it'll give me an option to open up a wide variety of different PowerPoints or Word documents or whatever I have open on my desktop I can open that up and share the content with everybody else I can also sh share my entire desktop. That sometimes is helpful. If you do do that, make sure you don't have anything personal on your desktop that you don't want other people to see. Now, in general, in the main group settings here, when we meet as a, as a large group of, of 66, or how many other people ultimately enroll in the class, you won't use the share feature. This is something that mainly I will use here in this Teams channel. You will have an opportunity to use this when you move into your groups. I'll show that to you in just a moment. One other thing I want to show you is this thing called the whiteboard. And we'll use this quite a bit in class. And as you can tell by the name, it's, it's a whiteboard. And so different colors here, whatever you want to draw here, maybe we'll draw a DNA molecule, something like that. It's easy to erase, I can erase that. We can annotate on here and say, this is DNA. We can also add a note here as well. We can move the image around. If we want to add, draw something over here. And the nice feature about this, particularly when you're working in your groups, is that the person who opens this can draw whatever they want to draw, but someone else who is also in the group can also draw simultaneously. So there will be some activity that we do throughout the semester where I might ask you to draw a DNA molecule and label the different parts of it. And if I'm the one that started this, another team member could also help and start labeling, say, the five prime ends and the three prime ends and all that good stuff. Someone else could jump in here and start showing some hydrogen bonds. So you can work on these whiteboards simultaneously. So that's a, that's a useful feature. When we're meeting in class, we begin in this large room and we will take our individual quiz here and we'll discuss the answers and solutions to various problems. But after we take the individual quiz, you'll move to your individual groups and take the team test and start working on your activities. Now, depending on whether or not you are using some of the new features of Teams, how you exit this team and move to the other team will be a little different. I will make sure I send out a, a YouTube video by someone else talking about how to use these new updates. And I think you should probably go through that and that, that way you'll have all the features that Teams can provide you. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit leave. I'm going to leave this meeting and it'll take me back to our main page here. And once you've been released from the main channel, you move to the group that you're in. So let's just click on group A. And then what'll happen is one of your group members will need to start the meeting. 
And what you'll want to do is prearrange who's going to start the meeting so you don't have two or three different meetings going on at the same time. When you start the meeting, you'll click this button here to start the meeting. And I should also mention if you're using Microsoft Teams without the new updates in it, the icon that you have to click to start a meeting will be shown at the bottom of the screen. But hopefully you'll all watch that other video and get the new updates with Teams. And click on Meet. You can change the channel if you want to there, the title of it. There's no need to, but you can. And then you just hit Join Now. And you'll see the exact same thing you saw when we were in the main group, except only you and your other teammates will be in here. Now, in this room, you'll take your team test, similarly as you did when you were in Biology 112. And then when you're done with your team test, you'll come back, you'll exit this room here, and you'll go back to the main room so we can talk about the team test. And then you'll come back to this channel, your group channel, to work on the different application questions that are assigned for that day. And then we'll move back and forth between your group channel and the main channel so we can discuss the answers and the solutions to the different application questions. If you are familiar with what you did in Biology 112 in our active learning classroom, it's a very similar setup, except instead of sitting at a table with your team members, you just have this group channel. And this group channel is kind of like your table. Now, if you're working on something, and you want to get my attention because something doesn't make sense, you can come down here and type a message. Like, we need help. And I'll do my best to get to you in a timely manner. Now, I'm going to be moving between 14 different groups, so it may take me a little while to get there, but I will get there. Now, if you remember, I said one member of your team needs to open this up, and my recommendation is that we just pick one member of the team and they're in charge that whole week. So, in the teams that I sent out to you in Blackboard, everyone has a letter by their name, A, B, C, D, or E in, in some cases. So maybe the first week, team member A is the one that's in charge. And so they should open up the meeting and they should also be the one that manages the Inta dashboard. Now what that team member will wanna do is they wanna come here and click share, and then they will have already have their browser open to the Inta dashboard website that we're going to use because you just took the individual test. So it's already open. And so when you do that, all you do is click on that and it will share the in the dashboard to your whole team. Now the rest of your team should also have that open as well. They don't have to just look at it here. They, they can look at it on their own computer as well. It will take some time getting used to how to move in teams from one channel to another channel. And it'll also take some time getting used to working with both Microsoft Teams and into dashboard at the same time. But I'm confident you'll be able to do this. Um, my summer class, it took them about a week, and then by the end of the week, they were pretty comfortable moving around between the different tools that we use in this class. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this channel. Oh, and I should say one more thing here. When you leave a channel, don't end the meeting, because if you end the meeting, then when you come back, you have to restart the, the meeting. It's better just to leave, and that way, it will remain open and you can come back. To. And if it does shut it down, just start a new meeting. It should not be a huge problem for you. Okay, just a couple other things about Teams that I want to make you aware of because I think it will help you throughout the semester. And that is different ways you can utilize your different groups here. Now, while you're going to use your individual groups every day in class, these groups are available to you 24 hours a day. So if the members of your group would like to meet later that afternoon or later that evening, or over the weekend to study or to work on problems. You can always come to your group A or group B, whichever one you're in, and start a new meeting and everybody can be there to start working together. In these times when it's harder for us to meet face to face, this should serve as a very useful tool as you study and work with others to accomplish the different tasks for the semester. Another thing I wanna show you is files. You could upload a document from your desktop if you, had, if you had been working on something, or you could create something new. So you could create a new Word document, a new Excel, whatever you might want to. And this way, you could start working on various problems with your teammates, and this file will always be here in this team's channel. It's not the exact same, but it functions similarly as a Google Docs meaning that when one person writes on it, it's automatically saved. And you can see some of these other features as well. 
Now one last thing I want to show you is a plus. You can add to your own Teams page various kinds of applications. A couple things you might want to add is you might want to put a website that you're going to use a lot. So maybe you're going to put into dashboard as a website in this toolbar here. And then you just put the website here and you hit save and now into dashboard is right here. So every time you log into your Teams page, you already have the website saved for into dashboard, which we're going to use every class. So you just click on that and sign in and you can get working on the different quizzes. You can also work with into dashboard in a separate web browser if you'd like. Either is fine, but you may find this useful. And I'll go ahead and leave this here in group A and you can always remove it if you want to by just hitting remove or rename it or however you want to change it. You might also want to put a link for Blackboard or maybe there's some other website that you're going to use a lot in this class. Well that gives you a pretty good introduction to Teams and how we're going to use it this semester. I probably forgot to mention a few things along the way and there's a lot of different aspects to Teams that you'll learn on your own that I'm not aware of. It's a really good tool and I think you'll find it to be very helpful as we navigate this semester. If you have any questions about this, feel free to ask me or contact CMU's help desk and they'll be able to answer any questions you might have. All right, I will talk with you later. Have a good one. Bye.